Today we're going to talk about momentum and do it with two of my favorite puzzles or demonstrations of momentum. So first I have a question for you. So assume you're sitting in your desk, uh, you've got the door open to, to your room, and there's some loud noise going on outside your door. And you want to close the door, but you don't really feel like getting up. But you've got three different balls sitting on your desk, all of the same mass. You've got a clay ball, a bean bag, and a bouncy ball. So if you throw the clay ball at the door, it'll stick to the door. If you throw the bean bag at the door, it'll hit the door and then uh, immediately stop, so it'll just fall straight down. And the bouncy ball, if you throw it at the door, it'll bounce back. And just for convenience, we'll assume that the bouncy ball bounces back uh, at pretty much the same velocity that you threw it. So if you're trying to make sure that whatever ball you throw at the door closes the door, and maybe you're hoping it's going to slam the door, you know, and you're trying to make a, a big point, um, you know, so that whoever is outside making noise kind of gets the idea that, that you're trying to uh, focus and need some quiet. So which one would you pick? So you've got the lump of clay, which sticks to the door and moves with it. you got the bean bag that hits the door and drops straight down after hitting the door. And the bouncy ball, which bounces back after hitting the door. So which one would you pick? To help us understand why this, uh, what this result is and show us a little bit of a surprising result, here we have a demo which basically reflects the bouncy ball and the bing bag. I have two rubber balls that I'm going to roll down the ramp behind me and let the balls collide with the wooden block at the end of the ramp. The balls have very nearly the same mass but very different elasticity. So when I drop the two balls, you'll see they bounce differently. Okay? Okay, so this ball is very bouncy, high elasticity. This ball, not very bouncy, low elasticity. So let's roll the balls down the ramp and see what happens when they collide with the wooden block at the end of the ramp. So first the not bouncy ball, we'll roll it now. collides with the wooden block and makes it shake around, but the block stays where it was after colliding. Now the bouncy ball will roll it down the ramp and see what happens when it collides with the wooden block. Here it comes. So what is it about those two collisions that causes a different thing to happen to the wooden block? That Right, so why did that happen the way it did? Uh, if you're like me, you're probably surprised and maybe would have thought that the um, non-bouncy ball, or as we have the bean bag, might be the, the best option, right? It, it seems like it uh, gives up all of its momentum, so why wouldn't that be the, the one that's most likely to close the door or knock over the uh, block in the demo? Well, let's take a look at the momentum. And so before the collision, these balls all have the same mass. We can assume that you could throw them all with, at the same speed, so they'd all have a certain momentum. So we'll take toward the door to be a positive direction, so they all have a positive momentum P1. What about after the collision, after they hit the door? Well, the lump of clay uh, hits the door, and it sticks to the door, so it's going to still be moving. Even though it's attached to the door, if we just think about the momentum of the clay, it's still got some positive momentum P2. It's going to be smaller than P1, but still positive. The bean bag, well, it stops, so it has a uh, momentum of zero after it hits the door. But the bouncy ball bounces back, so if we assume that it bounces back at the same speed that you threw it with, the sort of ideal bouncy ball, it would bounce back with a momentum of negative P1. So what's important is the change in momentum. For these balls right because the whatever change in momentum they experience uh, the door is going to have a change of momentum with the same magnitude but in the opposite direction right so all of these balls uh, have a change in momentum that's negative the door is going to gain some positive momentum because the door starts out at rest so the 
momentum of the door for the clay ball is going to be the difference between these two momentums, right? P1 minus P2. And we can quickly see that that loses out to the bean bag because the bean bag goes from P1 to 0, so the door is going to get all of that momentum. However, we want to take uh, the, the bouncy ball. It's, the, again, the difference between these two. So if we take negative P1 minus positive P1, that'll tell us that the change in momentum for the bouncy ball is negative P2, sorry, negative P1. So the momentum of the door is going to be 2P1. Right? So if we were to rank these, we can see that the bouncy ball is first in the, in the biggest change in momentum. The bean bag or the non-bouncy ball is going to be second. And the ball that sticks in the inelastic collision, the purely inelastic collision, uh, is going to have the smallest change in momentum. Right? So that would be how we should rank um, each of these options. Now, this is not a purely uh, theoretical exercise. Um, this is helpful in designing a type of space probe that uh, was first launched in 2010. So this is the Icarus solar sail launched by Japan in, in 2010. So it turns out that light actually carries momentum. So people wondered, well, could we use the light from the sun to propel a space probe? And it turns out you can, right? It's... Uh, you know, not as effective as a rocket, but it's free energy, right? It's just coming from the sun, not not something that we have to put into fuel or anything like that. So all it is is powered by, just like a sail, it's the uh, momentum transfer of the light hitting the sail, right? The particles of light are called photons and they hit the sail. So would you want something that completely absorbs the light, something that's black, uh, and absorbs all the light? Or would you want something shiny and reflective that's going to make the light bounce back? Well, you can probably tell from the picture um, that they chose the shiny one. So the shiny case is just like the bouncy ball, right? The light hits is, hits the, uh, the sail and then bounces back. So it's going to have a bigger change in momentum than if the light were absorbed. So that's a practical application. Um, maybe a bit more practical than, you know, having three different balls sitting on your desk of equal mass and being too lazy to go up, get up and uh, close the door. So we could drop the basketball, drop the tennis ball. Neither one's all that bouncy. But if we drop one on top of the other, the momentum gets transferred to the tennis ball. Right, so why did that uh, demo with the basketball and tennis ball work the way that it did? Right, neither of them looked all that bouncy, uh, but when the tennis ball was dropped on top of the basketball, uh, we saw that the, the tennis ball goes flying much higher than, than you might expect. So if we look at this uh, before the collision, what so before the two balls collide, the basketball reaches the ground first and has bounced up and uh, is already moving back up. So if we just treat this as being perfectly elastic, right, just to get an idea, um, if the, uh, the basketball and the tennis ball are dropped at the same height and the basketball has already bounced back up off the ground, then they're moving at the same speed but in different directions. However, the uh, momentum doesn't have the same magnitude because the tennis ball is much less massive. So if we look at the initial momentum, the basketball has a large amount of momentum, momentum pointing up. The tennis ball has a small amount of momentum pointing down. But if we look at the uh, change in momentum, right? the change in momentum has to be the same for the two objects by conservation of momentum. So if we look at the size of these arrows, right, the... Um, the arrow doesn't make a big difference you know, it's much smaller than the momentum of the, the basketball, the initial momentum of the basketball. So the basketball slows down a bit, but it may not even turn around until gravity turns it around. But the tennis ball had a, a small momentum to start and a small mass. So that change in momentum uh, is going to make it turn around and also uh, give it a large upward velocity. All right. So the, the surprising thing here uh, is, is seeing that these two balls... Um, you know, when you just drop them, 
that you get that large increase in velocity for the tennis ball. But you probably wouldn't be that surprised to see it um, in a just horizontal picture. So in this next video, I'll show what happens if you just throw a basketball and a tennis ball toward each other at, at about the same speed. The basketball is kind of unaffected, but the tennis ball goes flying. Right? So it's, a, it's the same uh, sort of collision as we get from dropping one on top of the other.